This is problem 13-31. It is on page 722. In an ideal gas mixture, the partial pressures of the component gases are as follows. Carbon dioxide, 12.5%. Oxygen, 37.5... I'm sorry, not percent, kilopascals. 37.5 kilopascals for oxygen and nitrogen, 50 kilopascals. Determine the mole fractions and mass fractions of each component. Calculate the apparent molar mass the apparent gas constant, the constant volume of specific heats, and the specific heat ratio at 300 Kelvin for the mixture. So basically, they just want us to calculate everything we can to come up with properties for this mixture. So what we're given, let me just jot it down, is that the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide, let me put a CO2 subscript, is 12 and a half, and I said percent on accident, I meant of course kilopascals. The partial pressure of the oxygen is 37.5 kilopascals, and the partial pressure of the uh, nitrogen is 50 kilopascals. Now it's pretty obvious that uh, from uh, Dalton's law that the partial pressures add up to the total mixture pressure. So from here immediately you can say, well, then the, the total pressure must be 100 kilopascals. And they told us that the temperature uh, is to be taken at 300 Kelvin. I believe that said that. Let's double check. 31, where did they say it? Yeah, 300 Kelvin. Um, well, they didn't really say it, the temperature was 300 Kelvin. They just said take the uh, heat capacities to be at 300 Kelvin. So instead of doing this, let's just say any CP or uh, CV needs to be evaluated at a temperature of 300 Kelvin. Okay. So we'll just leave it at that. Uh, now, to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to set it up as a, a table. Um, or at least I'm going to set up a table, but let me, before I do that, let me write down what we're supposed to find. There's a bunch of stuff. The, the mole fraction is Y sub I. The mass fraction is M F sub I. The apparent molecular weight uh, is just capital M sub M for the mixture. The apparent gas constant is R sub M for the mixture. And the heat capacity for the mixture at constant pressure and constant volume are desired, as well as the ratio of the heat capacities for the mixture. So we've got seven different things that we need to find. And it's not just seven, because each of the sub I's mean for that particular species. So there's, there's three species here. Anyway, the reference table that I'm going to use so I don't uh, forget it is this one. For carbon dioxide, oxygen, and nitrogen, I'm going to need the molecular weight, and I'm going to get it in kilograms per kilomole because we're working in metric units, so I may as well go and use it. Now, numerically, it's the same whether it's pound mass per pound mole, but uh, anyway, so if you go to the the first page of the appendix, you'll find all of these numbers for these various species. They are 44.01 kilograms per kilomole for carbon dioxide, 31.999 for oxygen, roughly 32, and 28.013. Now the heat capacity at constant pressure in kilograms, or I'm sorry, kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin the constant pressure heat capacity is 0 0.846. Uh, for carbon dioxide, 0 0.918. For oxygen, and 1.039. For nitrogen, the constant volume heat capacity in also kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin are 0 0.657, uh, 0 0.658, very, very close between carbon dioxide and oxygen, and 0 0.743. So I just needed that for reference. Now to calculate, let's start off with the, the mole fractions Y sub I. To calculate the mole fractions, this is pretty easy because the partial pressure ratio of the, um, of the uh, you know, each gas is just the partial pressure divided by the, the, the total pressure, and that is the mole fraction. Uh, so it'll be pretty easy to calculate the mole fraction for carbon dioxide, for example, 
It's just, in fact, I'll just write them down because it's obvious. They set up the problem very easily. It's 12 and a half kilopascals over 100, so that's going to be just 12.5 percent, or in other words, 0 0.125 as a um, a mole fraction. We can do the same thing for the other two, and they come up. I mean, this is pretty trivial. We can all do this in our heads. So why the mole fraction for oxygen is just 37 and a half over 100? So 0 0.375, or in other words, 37 and a half percent by counts is oxygen molecules. Um, for the nitrogen, obviously that one's really easy, 0.050. So we've taken care of all the y sub i's. Now we'd like to find the mass fractions. To find the mass fraction, we can actually kind of cheat because it's related to the mole fraction. So y sub i, it's not equal exactly though. We need the molecular weight of the ith substance divided by the apparent molecular weight of the mixture. So we're going to need this molecular weight of the mixture first. Let's go off and get that. So let me put a, a pause in here and say the molecular weight of the mixture is just a weighted average of the various molecular weights of the individual species. So all I really need to do is take the uh, mole fractions that I've got for carbon dioxide, multiply it by the molecular weight for the carbon dioxide, add to that the uh, percentage of oxygen in moles times the molecular weight of the oxygen plus the mole fraction of the nitrogen multiplied by the molecular weight of the nitrogen. So plugging in all these numbers, I'm going to put them down below so you can see them. 0 0.125 we know for the carbon dioxide, molecular weight of carbon dioxide, 44.01. I won't write down the units because the, the, the the uh, mass fraction and the mole fraction both are dimensionless, so there's no need to write down units. But the, the molecular weight has dimensions, so I'll just write that down at the end. It doesn't look very good. 44.01 plus the fraction of oxygen is 0 0.375, I guess it could have looked up there, uh, multiplied by the molecular weight of the oxygen, 31.999 kilograms per kilomole, but again, I don't know why I'm moving my parentheses around, it doesn't really matter. Uh, plus uh, the molecular fraction or the uh, mole fraction of the nitrogen times the molecular weight of the nitrogen, 28.013. And these are all, um, let's see, what, uh, kilograms per kilomole. So I found out then that the, well, let's just put it over here, the average molecular weight comes out to, well, let's see, where is it? Oh, here we go. It's 31.5074 kilograms per kilomole. So that's the apparent molecular weight of this gas mixture. So now from here, what we can do is calculate each individual uh, mass fraction. So let's start off with you know same order. I always try to stay in the same order when I've got a mixture of gases. So we'll start with carbon dioxide. And we need Y for carbon dioxide. Well, Y for carbon dioxide is 0 0.125. And then we scale that basically based on the molecular weight of that species over the apparent molecular weight of the mixture. So we need the molecular weight of the carbon dioxide, and that is still... 44.01, and then divide it by the apparent molecular weight of the mixture. Now, I didn't write the units here because they'll cancel, and the mole fraction has no units, so the mass fraction has no units either, although technically you could say it's uh, you know, kilograms of the species divided by kilograms of the, uh, the, the, the mixture, but you can also say it's dimension. So where were we? This comes out to about 0 0.1746. And by the way, all of these are answers. I guess I can underline all of my answers in red, all the things that we're being asked for. There's a mass fraction of the carbon dioxide, the mass fraction of what species is next, the oxygen. Then is 0 0.375. Okay, that's Y, multiplied by, I need the molecular weight of the oxygen, 
0.999 divided by the molecular weight of the mixture, 31.5074. And so this comes out to uh, about 0 0.3809. So there's the mass fraction of the oxygen. Now let's get the mass fraction of the nitrogen. And we'll be zipping right along. I'll go ahead and check that off. Oh, we're supposed to get the molecular weight of the mixture. I've already done that. So we've got two th or three things total checked off once I finish this. So I need 50% uh, multiplied by 28.013 by 31.5074. This comes out to 0 0.4445. All right, so now we've taken care of three items on our list. The gas constant, the apparent gas constant is pretty easy. All you have to do is take the universal gas constant and divide it by the apparent molecular weight. The universal gas constant is 8.314 kilo, uh, kilojoules per kilomole per kelvin. And then the molecular uh, weight of the mixture, <coughs> excuse me, or the apparent molecular weight is still 31.5074, but of course it has units, is kilograms per Kilomoles. So you notice the kilomoles go, go away. We have kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin, and that comes out to about 0 0.2639 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. Okay, so now we've taken care of everything on the left-hand side of my list. Now what about all these other things? Well, I'm out of board space. Just about, I guess. You know what? Maybe I can fit it in right here. Let's try that. Uh, close to the edge. So let's see what happens. The heat capacity of the mixture, the constant pressure heat capacity, is easy. You just take the weighted average of all of the uh, heat capacities. Now I've got to be careful here. You know, I may have made a mistake because I've got the heat capacities in terms of. Yeah, I think I've made a mistake here because I've got all my heat capacities in terms of mass, and I've written Y sub I. So I should have written the mass fraction uh, multiplied by the heat capacity of that particular species. Because when you're dealing with the heat capacities on a mass basis, you have to use uh, something that relates to mass, not something that relates to moles. So I'll have to grab a calculator and correct my work here. So let's see. Yeah, all of that would be wrong, so I'll just have to work it uh, at the board. The equation I'm using should be in the summary. And by the way, the summary in this chapter, page 720, is, is really useful, so I really recommend that you uh, look at it. I don't think, yes, it does have the heat capacity equations. Yeah, so if you look at uh, 720, it's uh, the two last equations is what I'm, I'm working with here. Well, I guess not exactly the two last, the four last. So I should have used the mass fraction, and I'll just have to put my paper down and use a uh, calculator instead to come up with the correct answer. So let's see, to get the average heat capacity, the heat capacity of the mixture, I need the mass fraction of, let's see, let's keep everything on the board. The carbon dioxide, 0 0.1746, multiplied by the heat capacity, and that number is 0 0.846. Again, I will not write down the units until the end. Plus, I will need the mass fraction of oxygen, which is next. Uh, carbon dioxide, here we are. Oxygen, I'm covering it from the camera, 3809, 0 0.3809 times the heat capacity of the oxygen, 0 0.918, and then plus the mass fraction, uh, let's see, of the nitrogen, 0 0.4445, and I apologize if this is off the screen, the heat capacity of the nitrogen, 1.039, and these are all just kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin, so I won't bother writing that down. 
Let me just compute it quickly. Turn this on. So 0.1746 multiplied by 0.846 plus 0.3809 multiplied by 0.918 plus 0.4445 times 1.039 should give me there we are, 0 0.9592 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. So that's another answer that they requested in the problem statement. And it should, uh, would it be relatively close? Let's see, these two are fairly close, those two are fairly close, and those two are fairly close. So yeah, this number should be same order of magnitude or so, and probably close to what I got before. I had 0.9695, but of course I used the wrong fractions. I used the molar fractions instead of the mass fractions. But even still, 0.9695, my wrong answer is close to 0.9592. So I don't think I hit a button on the calculator wrong. That's more what I'm worried about than anything. We can do the same thing for the constant volume heat fast. It's the same game different players, almost the same players, MFI, C, V, I. This is pretty easy because really all we're doing is, is weighted averages. So we're calculating. Now my, uh, my mass fractions will be exactly the same, so I can just copy those down, 1746. But the heat capacity will be the constant volume heat capacity, so 0 0.657 plus 0 0.3809. And uh, instead of that one, I need 0 0.658 plus 0 0.4445 and finally 0 0.743. Now, plugging all of this into my calculator, what do I get? Let's see, 0 0.1746 times 0 0.657 plus 0 0.3809 by 0 0.658 plus 0.4445 by 0.743 gives me 0 0.6956 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. I should introduce errors on purpose so that you don't just copy this off. Well, I guess it depends on whether I use this for an example or a homework problem. So how close am I to yeah, before I got 0 0.7004, this is close, again, numerically, so I'm not uh, worried that I hit a button wrong on the calculator. The last thing to do is to calculate the heat capacity ratio, let's carve out some space here, of the, the mixture. And that's easy, that's just CP of the mixture over CV of the mixture. And so if you plug in the number CP over CV, we got them right here, 0 0.959. Two divided by 0 0.6956. Of course, it's dimensionless. And so if we take uh, 0 0.9592 divided by 0 0.6956, we get uh, 1.3 uh, 7. If I round it properly, it'd be 1.379. I guess we can make it clear that that is a non-dimensional number ND. So that, uh, I guess, let's uh, check off everything. That gives me my average heat capacities, uh, or, mean, or my mixture heat capacities, as well as my uh, other properties for the mixture. Now, before I got 1.384, and this, again, would be close to that. The numbers I have here on my sheet are wrong, but I'll, I'll fix that before posting.